So why we build a study cell with the React Native Audit? So, hello everyone, um, I am Sahib Jod, a software engineer at JustPay. So those who don't know JustPay, uh, our SDK powers 100 million devices. And you may have seen the rotating logo at one Swiggy app, Kettle and Amazon app. And we also help build team and we have 20 million customers with that. We are also building just a few, which is like UPF for petroleum. So, yeah, so this talk is about just a story of uh, how we started with React Redux and then uh, in our quest to uh, improve the programming of our company, uh, help the freshers uh, find better ways to program, and ultimately, uh, we needed React media and we couldn't use it. So we had to build an alternative and then be in another. Okay. So we started using React Redux in late 2015, and uh, we were quite happy with it. We were building dashboards and uh, mobile machines and components with it. So it was going quite well. So uh, we liked the paradigm mm -hmm. how it was going, and we also JavaScript shop. So in the backend also we run Node.js. Uh, so yeah, we we are running JavaScript everywhere. So, in the quest to find better programming, uh, we were looking at various frameworks, libraries, like how do we improve it. So, uh, the senior people in our company mainly came from Trojan and Scala. So, we anchored on functional programming. So, we decided to use functional programming con uh, constructs in JavaScript, and we were using libraries like Lambda and RxJS, if you heard. Uh, FRP like systems. So we also looked at languages that compile with JavaScript. So that we consider no JavaScript. So we looked at Clojure script, uh, we looked at Elm. We were we must have heard about Elm and we may not have heard about Eve. So yeah, so we were quite interested in Clojure script in them. And so so we was the main problem. Okay. So at just day we are powering payments. So, uh, what happens is, let's say a bank, bank doesn't support something today, uh, they don't support OTP today, so then what do you do? You have, you have to make some changes, right? You can't do SD updates, you can't like, uh, write some Java code and release it, and you can't do that. And you don't expect, let's say, Airtel, Swiggy and all to roll out that same old time. So, what we needed was the ability to dynamically push some changes. Let's say some small UI tweaks, some way to help the users, right? Or change some flows. So, that was one question. Other was that uh, our SDK size has to be between 150 to 100k. So, that was uh, another main uh, constraint that we had. So, initially we were experimenting with HTML5 components. We were using the app features and all those things. Uh, so, yeah. We thought maybe React Native could do it. React Native could solve our solve our problems. Because the main issue with HTML5 components is that the UI is not that smooth, the animations are not that smooth, uh, the, the, the delay factor is not that good. So well, when we made the Hello World apps for React Native and Native Script, uh, like how React Native uses React, Native Script uses Angular. So the Hello World apps were seven MB. So that was not possible. The library overhead was around 6 MB, so we knew we can't do that. So, yeah, that was pretty big. So, we investigated, we, we tried to figure out why it was so big. So, we, it turns out that in the activity, they built their own JavaScript engine. Okay, so rather than using Android, Android, Ricky, or any other way, they built, uh, they wrote native Java code and created a JavaScript, JavaScript executor. And they were, so that was the main. Uh, reason why the size is so big. Another thing was they wrote a lot of native native components uh, in Java, so that these are the two main reasons why the size was so big, why it's 6 MB over there. So we had to build our own alternative, so we call it Presto UI. And uh, we found a different way of approaching the same problem. So uh, turns out that was pretty good in terms of software. So the initial SDK that we made was 21 KB. So like if you the AR file that you include in your APKs would be that much, and the current overhead is about 35 KB. So if you just include this, that's how big the SDK size would be. 
Okay, yeah. So how did we do that? Why is it so small? So uh, what we did is we used the native web view that comes bundled with Android. This time your Android updates, uh, your, uh, your Chrome also updates. So we depended on Google to update the Chrome and take care of security and all that. So instead of getting a uh, JavaScript engine, we do that. Also another thing is to remove most of the native code. What we did is we used something called reflection, which is a programming technique. So reflection is the ability of a computer program to examine, introspect and modify its own structure data at runtime. So basically, you, you have a lot of uh, power at runtime to manipulate things. Right? So you don't have to write native code. You can write a lot of generic stuff that can at runtime behave differently. Right? So main issue why people don't use reflection is performance. It's because a lot of your work is being done at runtime, so things would be slow. So we kind of solved that by normalizing the functions that were being called a lot, and we were also caching the duties that were already created. So in your Android duty, you were just stable. So then he came and we had three weeks of time. And most of the company is actually fresher. We have we have very few experienced people, mostly specials and interns. So we have we had a team of specials, especially when I was going to production and uh, it was pretty hectic and still it went great. And so as I said initially, functional programming was the anchor. Because the few experienced people we did have, uh, we knew how great functional programming was. So we found PureScript, the perfect language uh, uh, for us because it, it had the best of both worlds, Haskell and JavaScript. So how many of you have heard of Haskell? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so PureScript is a pure function programming language and it has very strong typing. It is pretty much a dialect of Haskell. And all the good and it is also backed by category. The good thing about Haskell and PureScript is that uh, the background is solid category. From as well as applicators, all these are actual terms that are used in Haskell. So, yeah, and types were really helpful. So, normally, we <coughs> were JavaScript shop, so we didn't think much about types we were going to PureScript, but over time we really found types help uh, when you're trying to deconstruct the problem. It helps build, it helps reduce the uh, bugs that occur and also with pressures. It helps them a lot in building the applications. So another thing we did was uh, we created something called flow language, which is a DSL. So normally when you have an application that you make it a transaction app. So transaction apps is like you go from A to B to C to D. So if, if you let's say show user <coughs> option, you show something, user chooses something, then you show him okay, you want you want to achieve this, I'll uh, fill this data. You fill that data, then you show it as a skill, set fill this data, and then finally you help the user achieve their goal, right? So these are transaction apps. So what we did we basically help the user achieve their goals. So what we did is we tried to make a DSL that makes it very easy to do that. So this is how it looks like. So there are no callbacks. So this is you can see, right? Yeah, so I will show the demo first. This is what we did. This is the demo app. Okay. You saw splash screen, right? Then we there are some list of operators. And let's say like something. So these are the international apps. We found that most a lot of applications are like this, they follow this pattern. So that whole app is looking at that much more, right? This is even the product designer can read, the uh, product person can read all this and they can make modifications to something. So what's happening? We show the splash screen and we know the input from the splash, output of the splash screen. Uh, we make some API call, get the operators, they show to the operators in the UI, right? And they wait for the user to select one operator. The user selects one operator here, right? And then we show another screen asking for the mobile number, then mobile number screen, then amount screen. And ultimately, we make an API call and make a payment and show the final state screen. Right? So, so, actually, I'm going to use the next screen. So, where are the So, so to, sh to show you the benefits of types, right? Uh, so, can you see that the status screen is made up of this? 
and if you have, let's say, the more ask for it, what are the options? There are two possible options. So there are two possibilities on that screen, right? There are two possible actions. One was user could submit or user could avoid. Similarly, uh, let's see some other part. Uh, okay. Same. So normally when you're building a screen, they'll say when you're trying to code the types, right? So they'll say we have to solve that problem. That is what all can happen in the screen. Before going to coding, before you write your function itself, in your type, <laughs> you're able to specify, okay, this is what I want. This is what you're thinking in your head, it helps with that. And it helps with basically all your conditions that I do on this or set you see. So, so, so. so this was the flow language that we built. Alright, so next what we did was on top of that uh, on top of Presto UI, uh, we made a sketch plugin. So what we did is allowed designers to design directly the that is there is no designer developer handover. The designer directly, whatever the designer develops, uh, designs is what the user gets. Okay. So let me show you one day. <laughs> so here I am going to start for the tag server. And then, so you may have heard about Sketch app, right? So this is what most people use to design this. So I have a demo, demo screen. And okay. So as you can see, that the uh, app is now here, and this is not just web, mobile web, uh, mobile web. It is also Android and iOS both. So the designers just made the screens, and it was actually directly get, uh, getting converted to native. So this is. So as you can see, this one changed. I make a change here. Let's say Yeah. So I'll just save it and then hot it out of my And then we get it. So as you can see, there's a mobile uh, web, a responsive web, plus iOS and Android, all of them in just from one design directly. So uh, that's the main benefit and we are still developing this. So like our designers prefer to have the fixed property where now they know whatever they are developing, there is not going to be any margin change or something. It's going to be directly what the user gets. So this is the main benefit because then they're normally never happy with let's say a designer or a developer forgets to make some change that they really want it to be there. That's one big benefit. They take care of all of you. And we are also starting a school of functional programming at JustPay. So as you can see, certain parts in Haskell and all these similar languages are quite hard because the learning curve is steep. So we found ways to teach pressures uh, function program very fast. So our goal aim was to quickly get them onboarded to monads and all these concepts that seem very hard, but actually it's not that hard and pretty powerful. So zero to monads in one hour. So these are the things that we are trying to develop inside the company to help teach others. And we also created the simple DSL that we saw. So without having deep functional knowledge, the product person can also see what the app is, they can make modifications. The flow language. So yeah. So so how I told you about JustPay's story. So this is also my story of how I just came out of college as an intern and I started with this project, this UI. And I started with this and I got obsessed with it. And so I used to go at like 4 a.m. in the morning or something. And so I even gave up because it was so hard. Basically, certain parts were I thought technically not possible, but it turned out it was. So all I want to say is that let's say you are stuck in some project 
and it's looking very hard. Even though I was an intern, uh, if you just push through, right? The skill doesn't matter that much. Like as long as you figure out a way, if you look at it from a different perspective, you'll find a solution. So that's what I wanted to say. So if you guys want to contribute to Presto or uh, check it out, it's on GitHub right now. And uh, if you guys can send an email to that. If you have any questions, let me know.